Okay, so Paolo is going to talk to us about you know how to build a full text search engine using only Django and Postgres. So I'm going to let you start. All the best. So hello everyone. I'm very happy to be here with you at EuroPython 2020. I want to thank all the organizer for making this online edition possible, and thank you all for attending from all over the world. If you're asking yourself what is a Pythonic full text search, I'll show you an example. This is the search function in the Django website. How many of you have searched information on it in the past? I think a lot of you. The search function is based only on Postgres and Django itself, and uh, I was the one who built it. So the next question is, who am I? I'm Paul Vecchiore, and I'm CTO of the 20 Tab. It's a Pythonic software company based in Rome, uh, for which I work remotely. I'm a software engineer and a long-time Python backend developer. After using Django for a few years, I became a contributor to the project. And now I want to try to explain a bit more about the title of this talk, a Pythonic full text search. I think you can read the definition of Pythonic by entering import this in the Python interpreter. These are only the first principles of the Zen of Python. The most important for me is the third one, and I think it's also the most difficult to follow. Full text search refers to technique for searching a computer store document in a full text database. There are a lot of search engines that already provide full text search as in this definition. The most popular search engine library is Apache Lucene, an open source software written in Java. Based on Lucene, there are two very popular search engines that I used in the past in some projects. Solar is the first one and is part of the Apache Software Foundation. And Elasticsearch is a product of the Elastic company. The last big project where I use one of them is Docs Italia. Docs Italia is an Italian government website when to find public documents. I worked in this project with my colleagues to improve the search function. Under the hood, Docs Italia is a fork of the open source project ReadyDocs. So, as the original project, it's a Django-based platform, and it requires a lot of Python packages to access the Elasticsearch instance asking for results. Of course, the search function is working very well now, but we can consider this a simple solution. We can say various things about external engines. On the good side, they are very popular. They have a lot of features, and you can find a lot of line resources about them. On the bad side, you always need a driver to use them from Django. You have to use their specific query language, and it's common to have synchronization problem. But let's go ahead. Hope, oh, this is embarrassing. Joke side, this is something similar to what happened in e-commerce when you find a product in the search results, but it's not available anymore when you click on it. Usually this happens because search results are fed from the search engine, which is not already synchronized with the database. So why don't we search directly on the database? Maybe a big one and with elastic memory, like this one. Postgres is a very popular and long life database. It added full text search years ago with specific data types and special indexes. And since then, many useful new features have been added every year until the last version. The main concept of full text search in Postgres is the document. 
A document is the unit of searching in a full text system, for example, a magazine article, or the union of all these parts. For example, the title, the abstract, and the body text. But implementing a web search function directly on the database can be a low level task. To do this, we can use a web framework, maybe one of the best. Django is a very popular Python web framework. It added full text search a few years ago. Uh, it did it in the Django country Postgres module. It had the specific fields, expression, and function. Since then, many new useful features have been added every year until the last version, which will be released in a few days, Django 3.1. The Django documentation defines document-based search as a full-text search with advanced features, weighting, categorization, highlighting, multiple language. We can implement all of them with Django itself. But to better understand how the full text search in Django works, we are going to see how to perform some queries from the basic to the more complex one. That can perform well also with a big amount of information. To do that, we can use the blog models as defined in the Django documentation. Here we have three classes with a few fields on it. A blog with a name, an author with a chart field, and an entry connected with both of them with a lot of text on it, and then the line body text and other fields. We can perform basic query on these models using field lookup. For example, we can search an author using part of his name. We can have more results performing a case insensitive query. To find more with accented letter, which is common in Italian or other languages, we can activate the unaccent extension. After that, we can search another name also if we don't know exactly all the accent letters. To have results also, if we don't remember well the other name, we can activate the trigger extension. Searching for an author, we can have results with similar, but not necessarily identical name, as you can see here. But to use all the above feature, we have to add the Postgres module in the installed apps. After that, we will be able also to perform a full text search on a field. For example, we can search for a word in the plural form and have results in the singular form. To search a text in the more than one field, we can use the search vector function. We can define our document as the union of the entry body text and the related block name. After that, we can search for a word and have more accurate results. To search using a more complex text, we can use the search query expression. We can also use common search syntax directly in the query text using the web search type. After that, for example, we can search for two words at the same time, having potentially more results. To perform a full text search in a specific language, we can use the search config expression. We can specify the language in both the docu document and the query. After that, we can have more precise results than before in the selected language.
To this relevant result first, we can use search rank function. Based on the query text and the document Django, we can create a rank. We can order and filter our results using this rank. And we can also show them. To perform a fine grade full text search, we can use the search vector weight attribute. For example, we can decide that word in the headline are more relevant than in the body text. After that, we will see a new rank in our results, also performing the same search. To highlight results, we can use the search headline function. We have to specify the highlight fields. After that, in the results, we will see some HTML tags. All these things can be customized using some attributes. To speed up all this search and simplify also the query, we can use the search vector field. We have to manually update our search vector field before running a query. But after that, we will have the same results as before, but way more quickly. I started using the full text search in Django 1.10 <clears throat> and the search frequently in the Django documentation for information about this new feature. But in the meantime, I started asking myself how was implemented the search function in the Django website itself. I noticed that the search was performed only on English contents. And in some cases there was HTML tags in the results. I studied then the Django website source code and I found out that documentation was generated with Sphinx and all the data was stored on Postgres. But the searches was performed in an external search engine. So I proposed to fix that on the Django developer mailing list. A lot of Django developers share different opinion about the update. The doubts were the amount of work to be done, the equivalence of search feature, and the increase of the workload in the database. The safe things, on the other side, were less maintenance, a lighter setup, and the exclusive use of Django on its own websites. After that, I organized the Django Sprint during the EuroPython 2017 in Rimini, and some developers joined me to work on the search update. In a sprint day, we created a draft of the Postgres-based full text search, but also we spent a lot of time uh, trying to set up the Django website locally. Presumably because uh, the external search engines. In the following months, I wrote an official pull request with a complete version of the pull text search. I received a lot of suggestions from other developers and that after a lot of comments, they merged my pull request. That was the first one of other merged pull requests in the same pull text search function. So today, after a few years, the Django website pull text search is multilingual, is based only on Postgres, it returns clean results, it's a low maintenance solution, and it's way easier to set up than before, also locally if you want to try to set up on your PC. As I already said, new photo search feature are released every year in both Postgres and Django. And I want to add all of them in the Django website search. For example, misspelling support, search suggestions, highlighted results, web search syntax, and search statistics. But after that, I want to share to you some useful tips to learn more about full text search and uh, how to become an expert on it. As I said before, 
I think the starting point is reading the Django documentation. The Django documentation on the Django website, it's full of information about the full text search feature. You can read all the attributes you can use or the function and expression you can uh, implement in your full text search. It's well written. There is a lot of example, more than the one I show you now. If you want more details, you have to read the Postgres documentation on the Postgres website. It helps you to understand how things works in the lower level. And for me, it was very useful uh, to understand how Django developers implemented something in a certain way. After that, you can read also the source code for both the projects. You can find them in GitHub and you can learn something from the source code and you can find documentation. And it helps you to understand more deeply how things work. After that, a strange tips. I suggest you to search for questions on Stack Overflow without reading the answer. Try to answer them by yourself and also solving the problem and submitting the, the answer. And it's something that sends you to the next level. Last but not least, you can also study this presentation because it's released with a Creative Commons license. So you can download, I'll share the link at the end of this talk and you can reuse it and uh, share with other people. I hope I've been able to show how it's possible to develop a more complete full text search using less software in the stack. Doing more with less is the motto of 20Tab. And it's our version of Pythonic. You can find more about our open source projects and our Pythonic work using this context with different social media and also in our website. To find out more about my work with Python and Django, you can use all my contacts. And using this QR code, you can download this presentation on my website. Thanks again for me and enjoy the next talk in the conference. Thanks. All right. Thank you for the talk. I think we have two questions. Will you be able to take them? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so here's the first one. Does the annotate on a search vector involve a massive database overhead to perform the query? So as I said before, I cannot recall slides. Oh, uh, hey, I did not understand what you said. I'm sorry. So I'm I'm taking the slide when I I answered this question. Okay, got it. As I said before, to speed up uh, the search query and maintain uh, a workload on the uh, database very low, we can use the search vector fields because it store all the documents we constructed in the search vector. And we can add index on this. And, and everything is working very fast as querying in a normal column of your database or field of your models. So this is the solution for speed up our query. Okay, so oh, uh, the, the next question is on the similar slide, I think. So here's the question. When using search vector field, I was unable to populate this field with fields outside the current model. For example, the author's name of a blog, if search vector field is inside the blog model. Do you know why and how to include relationship fields? Yes, I show at the beginning. Sorry. Oh, 
is one. And in this example, I shown exactly these things. So uh, the document I built, the search vector, uh, it's the union of the body text of the entry model and the name of the related um, object, the block. Uh, so, as you can see, we can construct the search vector using both these uh, models. To populate them, maybe you need something more sophisticated. Uh, you can update your um, search vector field using an, an update or also a other things, a uh, Chrome routine in the database. But in the theoretical uh, meaning, you can add here also more than one fields and also join many to many fields using aggregation. So everything is possible. Your document can be very big if you, if you want it. Okay, so here's the next question. How yeah. much more is the load on Postgres database with this full search feature? Oh, I think uh, this was yeah. just asked in other words right now. Yeah, okay. Yes, uh, actually there was a lot of people that uh, taught the workload on Postgres database uh, can be affected by the use of proto search. But at the end, uh, I can say uh, the work database, the workload of the database is identical than before because the search vector field is only a new column. And uh, if you add also index on it, at the end, when you're searching in this column, uh, you're performing an index scan on the column and everything works. Uh, very fast, uh, more than you thought, more than I thought before starting using it. And uh, um, you can check it using the search in the Django documentation website. Uh, so here's the last question. Uh, okay. When should Django Postgres search not be used in production? Sorry, can you repeat? Uh, when should the Django Postgres search not be used in production? I, I didn't understand the first word, but... Uh... Okay, so when should the Django Postgres search not be used in production? When I should think... this not be used? Yeah. If I ask, well, the, the question, I think uh, you can use with no problem in production because uh, I used in a lot of projects. And as I already said, uh, in the last three years, the Django search documentation feature is built using exactly this. So it's run queries using Django feature and full text search in queries on Postgres. So it's on production since a long time. Okay, that's awesome. Thank you very much for your talk and uh, it was pretty amazing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye.